the poisonous gas is spreading throughout the city, and survival is only possible on the rooftops of skyscrapers. At the beginning of the movie, we meet a 30-year-old loser named Yong Nam, who in his college years was a promising rock climber and winner of various tournaments, but later failed to find a job and is now forced to live with his parents. He spends his free time training in the park, but all the locals consider him a weirdo, even his little nephew Jiho doesn't take him seriously. After receiving yet another rejection for a job application, he meets his former coach at a bar, where they discuss their failures. Suddenly, all the patrons receive notifications of an earthquake, and Yong Nam is relieved that it's far from their town. In the evening, Lee Yong Nam washes dishes while his mom Hyun Ok and dad Jang Soo fight over the TV remote. Soon, their older sister Jung Hyun visits. She's annoyed by her unemployed brother, whom she's embarrassed about in front of their friends, and she urges him to tidy up before their mother's upcoming 70th birthday celebration. After kicking his perpetually dissatisfied sister out of his room, Yong Nam suddenly notices his old gear and reminisces about his time at the Mountaineering Club, where there was also a girl named Yui Yo whom he was in love with. Soon the whole family gathers at the Cloud Garden Hotel to celebrate Hyun Ok's anniversary. Yong Nam interacts with numerous relatives who ask him uncomfortable questions about work and personal life, but all he can tell them is that he sleeps, eats, and goes to the bathroom. Everyone is astonished by his meaningless life, but they claim that things will surely get better for him soon. During the celebration, Yong Nam accidentally notices Yui Yo among the hotel staff. Soon they step out onto the staircase to chat, and Yong Nam assures the surprised girl that he didn't know she worked here and chose this place based on internet reviews. Learning that the girl is the assistant manager, Yong Nam decides to lie and tells her that he's the director of a large company. Yui Yo is taken aback by Yong Nam's sudden claim of success and recalls their previous encounter, during which Yong Nam awkwardly asked her out, only to be turned down. Despite Yong Nam's attempt to portray himself as unfazed by the rejection and insists that everything has been going well for him since, Yui Yo remains skeptical, knowing it's not true. <laughs> the celebration continues, and Yong Nam is forced to endure the company of annoying relatives. Meanwhile, Manager Gu gathers his subordinates and announces that they can go home, while he and his deputy will wait until the end of the event. The joyful workers disperse, and Manager Gu persistently reminds Yui Yo of his invitation for a date. The girl doesn't want to go out with her boss but doesn't know how to refuse him, and this scene is accidentally witnessed by Yong Nam, who is still in love with Yui Yo. At the same time, a truck with suspicious tanks is driving through the city at night. Soon, the driver stops and, getting out of the vehicle, opens several valves, releasing a huge volume of mysterious white gas right in the city center. The gas begins to fill the crowded streets, and it soon becomes apparent that it is poisonous. As people quickly start falling to the ground and convulsing, the city descends into chaos, with panicked people trying to take cover in nearby establishments, and drivers losing control causing numerous accidents. Meanwhile, in the cloud garden, everything is still calm. Guests finish singing the last songs, Hyun Ok gathers the remaining food to take home, and Yong Nam burns with shame for his relatives in front of Yui Yo, who learns in a conversation with her acquaintance that Yong Nam lied to her and that he has actually been unemployed all this time. As a result of one of the explosions, a gas cylinder shatters a window and flies into the hall where the celebration has just ended. The frightened family hurriedly rushes out onto the street, fearing the sudden explosion of the cylinder, but soon realizes that it's even more dangerous outside and decides to return to the hotel, where Yui Yo also escorts other nearby people. Yang Nam notices his nephew Jiho on the street and urges him to quickly return to the building, but the boy says that his mom, Jung Hyun, is nowhere to be found. Suddenly, Yang Nam notices Jung Hyun in a car and shouts at her to return to the hotel immediately. However, the poisonous white gas is already approaching. Jung Hyun finally decides to get out of the car, but the gas envelops her, and she begins to lose consciousness. Yang Nam holds his breath and carries his sister into the hotel. Relatives try to help her, but she suffocates, and her whole body is covered in burns. Soon, Yang Nam and Yui Yo peek out the window and realize with horror that the smoke is rising rapidly, and Yang Nam urges everyone to get to the roof as soon as possible. At first, all the relatives are skeptical of the idea from the unsuccessful climber, but soon they all receive notifications with similar advice, and they quickly head upstairs. However, upon reaching the top floor, they find out that the door to the roof is locked, and the key is on the first floor, which is already filled with poisonous gas. Yui Yo suggests searching for a spare key in nearby rooms. In one of them, they see a news program on the television, reporting that the white gas is extremely toxic and capable of causing skin and eye burns, as well as lung damage, but the composition of this gas remains unknown. Reports indicate that new gas masks are strategically stored in areas of mass gathering, offering approximately 15 minutes of protection from the gas. Individuals are urged to shield their skin with clothing, 
wear masks, and seek refuge in safe zones. Meanwhile, rescuers persist in providing aid to the injured, while authorities coordinate evacuations via helicopters stationed atop high-rise buildings. However, the limited number of helicopters means they will prioritize rescuing those they spot first. While everyone is in panic searching for masks and the key to the roof door, Yang Nam, upon learning that the door to the roof can be opened from the other side, devises a plan. Remembering his skills as a climber, Yang Nam decides to break the window and asks Yui Yo to find some rope for a safety harness. Yeah! Yang Nam's relatives try to stop him from taking such a dangerous step, but the determined man, wrapped in the rope, rushes out of the window and grabs onto the neighboring building. Realizing that Yang Nam is not going to stop, Yui Yo grabs chalk and a carabiner left over from their previous climbing hobby and throws them to him for a more convenient ascent. Yang Nam starts jumping from roof to roof, getting closer to his goal, while all his relatives and acquaintances watch in horror, thanks to the live broadcast being conducted by one of his cousins. Soon, Yang Nam finds himself very close to the roof, but realizes that he can't reach the next ledge because the rope is too short. Gathering his courage, Yang Nam decides to unhook the rope, knowing that any wrong move could cost him his life. Finally, he's left grabbing onto the lion's head, but suddenly the fang he's holding onto can't bear his weight and... Fortunately, Yang Nam manages to pull himself up and successfully climbs onto the roof of the cloud garden. After catching his breath, he opens the door and lets everyone onto the terrace. As a helicopter flies overhead, people below attempt to attract its attention, but the pilots remain oblivious to their presence. It's then that Yui Yo proposes a solution, using the light from their phones to signal SOS in hopes of catching the attention of the rescuers above. Meanwhile, the police successfully identify the culprit behind the release of the poisonous gas. Shockingly, it is revealed to be the co-founder and former head of the research department at a biotechnology company. Following his termination from the company and subsequent losses in numerous lawsuits, he had become embittered and vengeful. His threats against the company's management escalated, leading to the development of a sinister plan for revenge. For several minutes, the family continuously sends an SOS signal, but the power of their phone flashlights turns out to be insufficient to be noticed. Yang Nam's cousins bring a loudspeaker to the roof and ask for help through it, but even that doesn't help. Soon, Yui Yo comes up with a new idea. She runs to the distribution panel and starts sending a signal using massive advertising billboards. This plan works, and the helicopter halts directly above them, lowering a rescue cage. The rescuers evacuate all the family members, but when it's Yang Nam and Yui Yo's turn, a signal indicates that the weight limit has been exceeded. Yang Nam persuades the rescuers to take at least Yui Yo, but they insist that the rope won't withstand the additional load. As a result, the young couple is forced to stay on the roof and wait for the arrival of the next helicopter. While the smoke continues to rise, realizing that they won't receive help, Yang Nam and Yui Yo gather all the necessary equipment, grab protective masks, and in makeshift polyethylene suits, they leave the building. For a while, they run through the smoke-filled streets in search of shelter and soon find a safe place, which turns out to be a huge sports hall. After resting for a bit from their difficult journey, Yang Nam and Yui Yo start throwing dumbbells with ropes attached to them onto the neighboring building. After confirming the stability of the setup, Yui Yo decides to go first since she is lighter. However, despite this, one of the dumbbells fails to hold, and the girl nearly slips. <laughs> Fortunately, the girl successfully crosses to the other side. Now it's Yang Nam's turn, but suddenly the poisonous gas starts coming out of the ventilation system, filling the roof and threatening to ruin all their plans. Yang Nam asks Yui Yo to hide, while he quickly returns back and, wearing a protective suit and carrying an additional weight, miraculously makes his way back onto the roof. Meanwhile, the rescued people continue to receive assistance at special centers in safe zones of the city. The news reports that the gas can be easily neutralized with ordinary water, however, considering the vast affected area, it will take an indefinite amount of time to eliminate the gas. Yang Nam's father, Jiang Su, deeply concerned about his son's safety, is determined to return to the contaminated area to find him. So, he and a few companions decide to walk to the hotel. Soon, they come across men launching drones into the disaster area, and Jiang Su offers them money to send a drone to the hotel to check on his son's well-being. Yang Nam and Yui Yo find themselves on the roof of another building. Seeing many human figures and mannequins around, the girl decides to line them up at the edge, creating the illusion of a crowd, as rescuers are more likely to save 20 people than just two. <laughs> Suddenly they notice a group of children who are trapped and pleading for help across the street. The rescue helicopter finally approaches Yang Nam and Yui Yo, but they decide to first aid the children. They use figures and themselves to form a large arrow pointing towards the adjacent building. Understanding their signals, the rescuers alter their course to assist the trapped children, while Yang Nam and Yui Yo plan to wait for help on the current rooftop. 
but suddenly, nearby, a gas station explodes, and the shockwave carries toxic gas their way. Now Yang Nam and Yui Yo are forced to seek higher ground again to survive. On their way to one of the towers, they stumble upon an active drone. The father is relieved to see his son alive and asks the police to locate and rescue him. The drone continues to follow the climbers, and the footage from its camera is soon broadcasted on TV. Soon, the whole country watches with admiration as Yang Nam and Yui Yo continue to overcome obstacles, avoiding columns of toxic smoke. Finally, they reach a sufficient height to catch their breath. At the same time, the drone's battery runs out, and the broadcast is cut off. Yang Nam's mother, watching her son live on air, can't handle the tension and faints. However, a couple of minutes later, a swarm of drones approaches Yang Nam and Yui Yo who understand the hopelessness of their situation and are already saying their goodbyes to life. Yang Nam gets an idea, he signals one of the drones, attaches a rope with a loop to it, and sends it to the adjacent building to hook the loop onto a pipe. Stretching the rope between the buildings, Yang Nam and Yui Yo tie themselves together and prepare to quickly traverse to the other side. However, they suddenly find themselves suspended at a tremendous height between the buildings. At that moment, the loop attached by the drone to the pipe starts slipping. In this critical moment, Yui Yo makes a sudden decision to cut the rope and move to the other building holding onto one end of it. Unfortunately, that portion of the rope couldn't hold, and they plummet to the ground. Their parents and all the onlookers are stunned by the sudden turn of events, overwhelmed by shock and concern. The rescue helicopter arrives on the scene and prepares to take off when the pilot suddenly notices signal flares on the crane tower and sees that Yang Nam and Yui Yo miraculously survived. The climbers are brought to a safe place, where Yang Nam reunites with his family, who are overjoyed that he's alive, but also furious at his recklessness. Manager Gu rushes to Yui Yo, pretending to be deeply concerned about his beloved, even though he never offered to take his place in the rescue basket. Fed up with his intrusive attention, Yui Yo bravely slaps him across the face, causing him to lose balance and fall. Then Yang Nam approaches Yui Yo and returns the carabiner she gave him back at the restaurant. However, she replies that it's too heavy and she'll retrieve it another time. Initially, Yang Nam doesn't catch her hint, but she repeats her words, and he finally realizes that she simply wants to meet up with him because she harbors feelings for him. And at that moment, a life-saving downpour begins, helping to mitigate the aftermath of the chemical attack faster than expected. Do you think Yang Nam's life will change after becoming famous? Share your thoughts in the comments below, hit the like button, and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.